The Honorable Elijah Muhammad improved on it and he taught you how to eat to live. So that you sisters in the MGT and GCC, he named it right, Muslim Girls in Training. You were not grown up in the way of God. You were girls in the way of God. And you were training under the guiding light of a man of God into a new way of civilization. And that dealt with cooking, sewing, cleaning your house, how to care for your husband, how to rear your children, and how to act at home and abroad. A new knowledge, a new wisdom, a new understanding, and with it, Elijah Muhammad was actually reforming your whole mind. Who was he making? What was he making? He was making Maryam. Yes, he was making, you better listen to what I'm saying. Because Mary, the woman of yesterday, is only a picture of an ideal. But Miriam of the 19th surah of the Quran is the ideal woman from whose womb will come messianic saviors of the world. It's you, the nigger woman. The woman that's been spat on and cursed and abused and misused. It's you that God has chosen to bring forth saviors for the entire world. Take it or let it alone. But you got to make a change in your life. Mary. Holy Mary. Mother of God. Not mother of Allah. Allah is neither begotten, nor does he beget. But you can birth a mental giant, a God that has force and power. You can bring into the world one that can master the forces of nature. You can bring into the world, sisters, men that will stand on top of these men. Like the top of Mount Everest. You can do that, and you don't have to wait a hundred generations to do it. Sister, if you got an egg that's alive, I don't give a damn if you're 40 years old. If you got an egg that's alive, you can do it, but you got to stop where you are. And damn it, you got to help her to stop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you don't know what to do with a woman, leave her alone. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you don't know what to do with yourself, stop where you are. You've been abusing yourself too long. Some of you check cigarettes in here. Doctor filling you up with all kind of medicine and pills. Yes, sir. For this, that, and the other, all these chemicals in your body just breaking you down. But these chemicals that you're eating are becoming a part of the egg that is the future of new life. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You gotta clean your body up. Yes, sir. You can't make a Jesus, a savior, a world savior with a womb that's contaminated and a brain that don't love God and is hateful of yourself and rejects responsibility. Huh? Look, man, I, I, I'm, I'm serious about what I'm saying. See, as long as you can look back and say, oh, but what Mary did. Oh, blessed Mary. Oh, blessed Mary. That's beautiful. Cause that don't leave you with no what to do. Yes, right. Then you can be finger popping and partying and opening your legs to anybody that come along producing these evil fruit. No good. You got to do it right this time. You can change the world with your womb. You can change the world, black woman, but a new thought got to come in your mind today. Not a thought to lie down, but a thought to lie down and bring God forward out of your womb. 
That's why Jesus said, you got to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And if you love him like that, you're going to look for a man that loves God. And you'll see him. He'll be just like any other man. Only the spirit of God will be all in him. You're the right one. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Let me finish this up. <laughs> hey, man. This is, we're in deep water here. Deep water. It's you. It's really you that can save the world. Not just you, but women all over the world need to know who they are because if they knew and took care of themselves even if the man were nothing you could take his sperm and make something out of it if you knew what to do with yourself black woman you got all these devils coming up all over the earth but we don't have no righteous men, no men of giant thinking, strong character that will stand up against this wicked demon and put him down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's you. It's you. So look, sisters and brothers, this is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says 75% of his work is with them. You are 25% of the problem. She's almost the whole problem. Yes, sir. We get the woman right, man. You got a future. Yes, sir. You don't know what to do with her. No, brother. I know you want a teacher. This baby don't listen to nobody but me. <laughs> well, wait a minute. And look at what you made out of them. Maybe you better let a friend help you with her. And since God created her, he's the best knower of how to cultivate her. That's why, oh, y'all all right? Getting happy up there, huh? Throwing your fan away. <laughs> well, it is hot, though. <laughs> I wonder, is it me? It's the, I know it's the lights, but it's this teaching. I'm just about finished, sisters. Sisters, now, brothers, I don't want you to feel that I'm neglecting you. But if she's 75% of the problem and 75% of the work, and the earth is three quarters water and one quarter land, and it is up out of the water that all living things come. It's out of water. This woman is the source of new life, man. And that's why we don't mess over her. We don't beat her. Even if she make you angry, brothers, it's better to walk out. Don't beat your woman. Don't knock her down with your fist. This is a terrible thing for a man to do. It's awful, awful, awful. You want to beat somebody? Go beat the white man. You hot with somebody? You angry? Go find some white man, beat him. But don't beat something. Well, some of these said that they'll whoop you. Yeah. Sister, now don't bear me too strong a witness, see? Because, see, I'm trying to get y'all married, see? But if, if you bear too strong a witness, these brothers get scared of you, see? And they don't, yeah, that's a terrible thing for a brother to get beat up by a woman, you know? But these sisters will whoop you today. And sisters say, yes, sir, I do it every day. But look, you see, there's a lot of hatred between us. There's a lot of hatred between the male and the female, the black male and the black female, a lot of hatred. You can't produce a good child like that. Now look, I'm gonna 
give just some little instructions. Look, sisters, if I don't ever see you again, I want you to think about who you are and start cleaning up your bodies. Smoking <clears throat> is not good for you. Not because I say so, but it just hurts your health. When you put all those poisons into your blood and that blood forms the brain of your new baby, you don't want to mess up that baby's chance to be a visionary. That's why you must clean up your life. You don't need to drink. You don't need to use drugs. You need to start thinking now about what you would like to produce. If Jesus was the desire of all women, I thought about that, then women would have to be made conscious of what they could produce then he would be a desire. Not that Jesus, the prophet of 2,000 years ago, that they would desire him, but they would desire to produce a messianic figure. Because when you look at the condition of the world and the condition of our people, you must think, how is this going to be solved? I must produce something from my womb to make a change in the world. Male or female, don't make any difference. Yes, sir. Women do this work too. That's right. That's right. Now how does this happen? How do you do it? First you prepare. Clean yourself up. Same way with the men. You must clean yourself up, brother, because the sperm that you have, which represents the future of your life, that's a sacred thing, but you're poisoning it every time you drop alcohol, cigarette, dope into yourself. It's reflected in your sperm. If you take dope, they can take a sample of your urine. They see it in the urine. Well, if it's in the urinary tract, it gets into the blood. If it gets into the blood, it's into the sperm. Do you see what I'm saying? So you're killing your future. You clean up. Come under the divine law of God. Begin thinking on a higher level. I want to produce a child that will help turn this world around. It's the womb of the woman that's going to produce it. Now since you got the good news tonight, an angel of the Lord has appeared unto you. Mary. And I ain't calling myself no angel. I don't get spooked out. I'm just your brother, a real live flesh human being. But an angel is only one who bears a message. And the angel of the Lord is giving you good news. That God is going to give you a pure boy. And you will say, how can I do that? <laughs> like Sarah, I'm too old. I'm barren. I ain't produced nothing too good yet. How am I going to produce a pure boy? This is good news. I'm a bearer of a message of your Lord that he desires to give you a pure boy. What does he want me to do? You gotta clean yourself up. Prepare your body to receive it. Now listen, if the brothers prepared himself, the sisters prepared himself, And you all sit down together and plan a life. Yes, sir. 
You all learn when your fertile days are. You can find all of that out. You find it out for evil purposes. Why not find it out for a good purpose? Take some time, though. Don't get pregnant right away. Take some time and get this body cleaned up. Get the mind in better shape. And look, begin to desire that kind of child. Look at the children that are in the world. You don't want nothing like that. It's better to be barren. But you make up in your mind, I want to produce a child that will help alleviate this condition of sickness and disease and ignorance and death. Don't you want to do that? Yes, yes sir. Remember what I said Sunday? That you are a co-operator with God? You, sister. That's what makes you so important. You are a co-creator. And what you do as you act upon the child, the life that has come into you, is central to what you produce. Now listen to this. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the Bible it says, God is love. The very creative force Behind all that you see is love. You are possessed with the power to love. And where there is no love in you for what you are producing within, you cannot produce one in the image and likeness of God. So it, it, it behooves a man, see, to work the field. Now wait, let me, let me explain myself. <laughs> it behooves a man. The field here is the woman's mind. You cultivate her ability, natural ability, to love. You don't plant no seed before you do that. That's why the worst thing you can do is try to find your way to the secret parts of the woman before you find a way to cultivate her natural love for you. That's why sex is not first, it is last. It is the culmination of a love developing and it's not a base expression it is the highest expression of two people yes, who genuinely love one another. Yes, sir. Now look, 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 look. Let's bear with me a couple more minutes. Sisters, have you noticed when you quote unquote fall in love, how that thing changes you up almost instantly? People look in your face and say, you look different. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? Yes. You've loved like that in your life probably once. Yes. Right. Hardly ever again. That's true. Because when you love like that once and are hurt, which all of you have been, you never come back to that point again unless God himself turn that natural love on. See, this is part of your innocence. When you are a little girl, you watch fathers. This is why some fathers fall in love with their little daughters. Yeah. And this is why fathers tamper with their daughters. I didn't understand it before. But I begin to study it. See, the woman who is the mother, you grow away from your husbands. Grow away from them. You don't want to do for them. But your little daughters, they love their daddies if they're there. 
and they end up wanting to do for daddy. You too tired. He's been working hard. Honey, I'm hungry. Well, get some yourself. <laughs> the hell you want me to do? I work too. The daughter said, Daddy, what you want? Well, that's right, you fix it for him. But the daughter now is serving your husband. And the daughter looked like you used to look before you got tired of caring for yourself and got sloppy and fat and out of shape and ugly and ugly acting. And he said, damn. <laughs> Son, you think we should go home? <laughs> Sisters and brothers, I don't mean no harm. But the man, the daughter loves the father with a pure love. And he ain't seen love like that. Because when he got you, somebody else had probably messed over you. Ain't too many of these marry a woman that know really, again, how to love. See, you lost that when you lost your virtue. Long, long, long times. <laughs> oh, Farcon, you need to stop. So when you get it, I mean, get the sister, brother. These like warmed over goods. Trying to, you know, food when you warm it up after it's been cooked. It don't taste like it tastes when it's first cooked. And I, what I'm telling you, sisters, now don't, don't be angry with me. The poor man can never get you right. Because what the real innocence and beauty of you, you gave it a long time ago. And once you got hurt, you withdrew yourself. Because the pain was so great, you thought you would die. And you never want that pain ever again. And this man cannot get to that. And he'd been through the same thing. He loved once hard and got stomped because he met you after somebody stomped you then he come along oh baby I love you baby and you looked at him and said oh you do huh? cold turkey I couldn't get that other nigga because I was too much in love with him to get him I'm going to make you suffer, nigga. <laughs> and by the time she get finished with you, boy, if you don't turn to be a homosexual, <laughs> you, you become a cold dude. I'm going to take advantage of every woman I see. And she say, I'm going to take advantage of every nigga I see. And with that kind of take advantage mentality, you use each other. You never love each other. You use each other. So your sex is a weapon that you use after you give me a dollar. Pay my rent. Nigga, you ain't got no rent money? This is a tough Wednesday night, you know? It is a tough Wednesday night. And what I'm suggesting to you, sisters, is that your daughters in their precious, innocent love, which is so pure, sometimes the fathers do not know how to handle it. And they find themselves actually falling in love with their daughters. And they abuse them. And it's all because you don't know how to protect your home, how to protect yourself. You know, you just 
You just have a few babies and let yourself go. You must never do that. You must never do that. If don't no man love you, love yourself enough to care for yourself. Put the best food in yourself because the food that you eat, eat fresh food, not canned food, not frozen food. Go where there are fresh vegetables, fresh fruit. Eat it while there's life in it. Cook it and know how to cook it that you don't cook the life out of it so that when you feed yourself, you're feeding life into yourself because you're going to make tissues and flesh and a pump and cylinders and veins, you know, almost six miles of veins, nerves. This is what you're going to make from what you eat. You're going to fashion a brain. Brother, when you can make her love again, and she can, she's going to be hard at first, you know. But you must be persistent and consistently good to her. She can't help herself. When she meets the Spirit of God in a well-made man, she can't help herself, brother. I don't care how hard she is. You can soften her up. And you ain't got to, you ain't, you ain't got to go to the Jerry Curl factory. I mean, the curls may excite them for a minute, but just a minute. Because, see, them curls ain't permanent. But security for her, she wants it permanent. You come to her with the spirit of Allah, God, and you can't get it without submission to him, obedience to him. He grows in you. She recognizes you. You're full of love. I'm going to tell you something. I see a lot of men, they love this macho thing. Let me tell you about this macho. You know, macho is all right. But I guarantee you that a muscle bound, and I wish I had muscles like that, brother. <laughs> I ain't telling no lie, man. You know, I always was the 98 pound <laughs> weakling that, that Charles Atlas said the people kick dirt in his face, you know. So I always was trying to work on my physique, you know. <clears throat> but let me, let me say this, brothers. It is good to have a wonderful body, strong body. It is better to have strong character and a strong will to achieve and to be a loving human being. Yes, sir. Women love men who are love and are loving. Yes, Not in a silly way. But you know, when you're so messed up in your head, you got something to prove. You got to show her how macho you are. Order her around like she's some animal, a dog, and beat her, smack her up. Oh, shut up! <laughs> See, after a while you find, you, you know, she produced children for you that'll kill you. And she's growing them in the house right now. And it ain't growing in love with you. It hates you for what they see you do to their mama. You gotta be wise, brother. If you can help turn on again her natural love, 
Let me show you what will happen. And then we go home. That love turned on in a woman lights up her being because the essence of her creation is love. That's the power of her womb. It is love. So when you can turn on that natural spark in her again, she wants a baby for you. She wants it. She ain't running from it. No, I don't want no baby. No, no, not now. We got things to do. We got to buy a house. We got to get a car. I got to go to school. See, they talk all that stuff to get around. The real issue is you, nigga. I don't want no baby for you. But you have not awakened in me the, de the desire for that. But when you wake up the love in her for you, she wants to produce you again. When she loves you, the greatest thing she can do is to have you growing on the inside of her. When she loves you. And when she loves you, she desires to do that for you. And she's doing something for you, for me, for us. And she's doing it above all for God. Now look at this. She finds she's pregnant. Her attention goes a little bit away from you. And you may feel, what's wrong with her? She's getting a little chilly now. But she's looking now to what's growing within. And sisters, what you need to do from day one, you find out you're pregnant. All the love that you have, focus it on this that's growing in your womb. And you begin to think about what you desire for God. And as the stronger you desire something, someone to come forth from you that will be a blessing to the world, you will begin to write as you form the mind of this new life, you will begin to write its future. He's already or she's already born with certain gifts and certain talents, but you will actually form, help to form that mind, that leaning, that spirit, you and God. And that's why you've got to pray. See, a woman who prays, that's your earnest desire, you pour it out to God. It impresses itself right here. And then, brothers, when you know she's pregnant, you cut out all movies. <laughs> you don't go to nothing this white man produce. When he got an MF this and an F you that and a murder here and a killing it. You keep her away from that. Because yes, you're making something to end that. Yes, she shouldn't go to the movie. Well, can I go? Well, you should stay with her. <laughs> because she'll be quick to think that you're rejecting her. Because her shape is changing and you running out, you always with the boys. When she's pregnant, you need to be with her. As her stomach gets bigger, you oil it so that she don't get stretch marks. And as you oil her stomach and massage it gently, you talk to that new life. It's in a bag of waters Forming and the water will transmit the sound. It already has ears. So pick up your holy Quran and read to your baby. Uh -huh. What was the first command that Allah gave to Prophet Muhammad? He said, read in the name of your Lord. Read. And what was it called? It was a chapter called the clot. While your baby is a clot, 
I said, read in the name of your Lord. Read to your baby while it is forming in the womb. Read in the name of your Lord who taught man by the pen what man knew not. Read. You can't read? Tell her, read. And you stay there with her and say amen. Talk to the child while it is forming in the womb. Tell him what you want him to be and what you want him to do. And then work with her every day. You work with that stomach. Work with your mind. Work with your diet. Because you're working for God. You're producing something to turn this crazy world around. Huh? And then as the baby begins to kick and move about, you be there. You be there with her to enjoy every moment as this is forming in the darkness of her womb. It is God inside with the life. You on the outside. She is on the inside because her thoughts are going in. That's why you got to keep her happy. You know when they say she got one in the oven? You don't stomp around the oven while the cake is baking. <laughs> what does that tell you, man? You don't do crazy things with a woman while she's carrying your life. You give her good things to look at. Sisters, don't look at no doggone uh, soap operas. Turn the TV off. Give yourself some good news. I give you good news of a pure boy. And you begin thinking about what, don't think on the sex, just think on the purity. This is what you call immaculate conception. Hmm? As the baby, as the time goes and you continue to read to the child, the words of Allah, talk to the child. You constantly talking to it from within. Every day, every night, you talking to it. And you showering love on it, both of you. And you, brother, showering love on her and the new life. If there are other children in the house, you all shower love on that mother and that womb so that the other little babies want the new one to come anxious to see it and they're joining with you is a whole environment of love because God is what? Love. Holy Mary, mother of what? God. Ah, blessed out the fruit of thy womb. Yes, Jesus. If you want to produce a savior, you can do it. Yes, sir. If you want to produce a devil and a destroyer, you can do it. And now the rest is up to you. Thank you for listening. May Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.